As we end our conversation on what season are you in after today, I hope you realize that there's a season for everything in your life. And because there is a reason for every season, we can be prepared knowing that God is able. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us again. We are in Ecclesiastics, and we're going to focus on the last two verses of Ecclesiastic 3. But although when you think about Ecclesiastes 3, it does sound a little pessimistic when you first read it. But God is just trying to share with us that everything is meaningless unless we live in fear of Him and we have a relationship with Him. So there's a lot of information packed into Ecclesiastes, okay? So let me read the scripture to you. It's going to be Ecclesiastes 3, 7 through 8. A time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Well, what time are you in in if you look about it and you think about it, what time is the country in? Because we are going through a time also in society today. So, Sonata, can you share a little bit more insight on this verse, a time to tear and a time to mend? Okay, thank you, Tammy. So, you know, as I was thinking about this, when you think of, of tearing something, you, you're changing how it is a structure. You tear a piece of paper, it's no longer one piece, it's now in half. And there comes a time in our lives when we have to confront situations. When we have relationships that we know are not healthy um, for us, or, or there is something that we clearly know that we need to go to someone about in order to, to resolve an issue, or to even end the relationship, if, especially if it is detrimental harmful to us. There's a time we have to tear it down, literally, when we have to stop it. We have to decide that we refuse to continue to be hurt by this person, this situation. And if we feel that they uh, have no care or concern for us, it is time for us to end it. And as women, sometimes we hold on to relationships that are unhealthy for far too long. And so when we when we, we're in a season where we feel that there is no forward progress in a particular relationship or situation or a job, and, and we know that God is telling us it's time to end it. It's time for it to stop. We have to be bold, pray to him. And if he clearly shows us it is time to cease and assist that particular thing, we need to be obedient because we're trying to hold on to it, thinking people are going to change, the situation is going to change. If God says shut it down, we need to shut it down, tear it down to stop it. But then we have the counterpart. There are times we need to mend when we need to reach out and to resolve issues and to especially ourselves. We know that we have been a party to tearing something apart or not helping the situation. We need to go and mend it. We need to apologize to our brother, sister, family member, friend, and 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 um, pray to God to give us the words that to say that they will believe that we are being genuine, that we want their relationship to be restored again. And we take full responsibility for what we did in order to cause it harm. So we're either on one end or the other. We're realizing it's over. This season and this relationship or thing is over. It's time to just tear it down to stop it. And at the same time, we have to be strong enough and be obedient to God and, and restore those relationships that we know we have caused harm to. Mm -hmm. I think that is awesome. And you kept stressing, which is so important, that you need to seek God to know when it's time to begin something or it's time to end something in every aspect of your life, because there could be listeners out there saying, but how do I know when, you know? So God is the one that's going to be able to tell you when. Yes. Yep. So yes. great. Thank you so much. Now, Lana, yes. um, in my earlier life, before I truly became a child of God and understanding um, the word of God, um, this next one, um, I need a little help on. Okay. So can you shed some light? on a time to be silent and a time to speak. Yes, yes. Like you, I had that same problem and maybe even now. Uh, 
um, what came to mind is the word restraint um, and knowing when it is wise to say something to someone and when it's better not to say anything at all. And I say wise because we really have to seek God's wisdom on that. Because when we come from ourselves, I have to question the motivation. You know, sometimes my motivation is not always good when I feel like I need to be heard about a situation that's going on in someone's life or that I happen to witness at work, you know, because it becomes about Alana and what Alana wants to get across and what Alana wants to be heard, uh, you know, uh, to be heard to say. So I think it's uh, motivation becomes an issue. And that's why we have to seek God and his counsel to know when we should say something. And is it going to be edifying to that person? Is it going to be edifying to the situation? Um, is it going to bring glory to God? Is it, going, is it helpful? Is it even right for me to say anything at all? Because on the other side of speaking was a time to be silent. Maybe that friend or that person just doesn't need to hear from me, but just needs some moral support, just some support, you know, just a quiet shoulder or just a, a listening ears. You know, my dad used to say, you have one mouth and two ears. You need to be doing more of this mm -hmm. and less of this. <laughs> so um, I really think that it, it comes down to restraint. It comes down to following God's word. And, you know, Proverbs is full of these little gems that I think are, you know, are relevant. Uh, Proverbs 21, 23 says, whoever keeps his mouth shut and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, and then we have to really remember that our words can be harsh mm -hmm. and uh, they can hurt people. And we need to be mindful of that and always try and lead with, you know, seeking God first as to what to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I, I think you go ahead, Andrew. I was just going to add to that as we're talking about seasons in your life that, you know, sometimes um, there are relationships, as you said, Ilana, but, you know, you may have a child that, that you've been nagging or you're always at odds with or something like that. And sometimes God just wants us to be silent and to pray and to look to him and put that child in his hands so that he can do what only he can do. We can't change anybody's heart or their mind or their thought pattern, but he can so sometimes the silence is to allow God to work and not us get in the way of his working oh, in that relationship. So I think that's also very important for us to, to recognize um, that, you know, by our silence, it doesn't mean we are agreeing or anything, but we may have given that thing over to him and, and uh, just saying, you have it, God, you, you take care of this. In this season, I can't do anything with this particular relationship. So. Yeah, and, and I think also it's really important to, to say, what is, what am I, what's the goal? Mm, am I right. saying this because they just have to know I want them to do this thing? Right. Or yeah. am I, is my goal to, to strengthen my child when I say something? Because then right. that will get you to change what you're about to say, because right. my motivation to get you to do something comes out a whole lot different than I'm trying to grow you up in something, you know? So I really think that's why we, we need to take that pause because when we start thinking about what's my motivation, what are we saying, then I think the restraint comes in, God's wisdom gives him time for his wisdom and restraint to come in so that what we say will be helpful. Yeah. And, and, and I want to add to that too, just had real life experience with that. And as you all were talking, God just said, boom, you just, you just experienced that. So, you know, our youngest son moved um, for a new job. So there were four, five apartments he went to, to look at, right? Those first two days we were there. And so Anthony and I had our first pick and he had his first pick and they were not the same. So I was just really, I'm like, this is the one he needs to have. And, and he was like, no, this. And so I, the Lord just said, Snell, stop. He, he is not a baby. He, he's 20. He's a grown man. You know, he, he, he's independent. I have him. You need to let me show you all where he's supposed to be. Amen. He just yes. shut it down. So, so I heard his voice so clear and I said, God, you're right. So I just prayed. I said, just open up the door, however you want to do it. So we'll know. So what happens? That one that, that Anthony and I like, that was off the table because it wouldn't be ready for two weeks, the apartment. So the one that he wanted was the one that could be ready like two days later. 
I said, I see what you're saying, God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got you. I got you. So, so you're right. I had to do that because I'm like, and I said, you, 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 this is where you're going to be living. If this is where you feel most comfortable. And then I thought God has a plan for you to be there. Correct. Where, the right. people you're going to impact, who's going to impact you. And so God just shut me down. And I said, you're right. And, when, and I just had peace. And then mm-hmm. it, literally three hours later, got the call. Oh, it's not going to be available. So I was like, okay. So you're right, Alana. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And it goes back to what you um, ladies are saying is listening to God, having yeah. your ears open and your mind set to listen to God. And I tell you all about the, um, the Bible is that the Bible couldn't hold everything that Jesus did, right? It couldn't. I mean, he lived on this earth for a long time. So you have to believe that what's in there is the main things that you need to know, yeah. right? And I have to bring this up because when we talked about a time to be silent and a time to speak, we have to think about that scriptures that said a man would rather live on the rooftop <laughs> than to live on with a nagging wife. <laughs> and what that tells me is women, we have the potential to nag. We do. We wouldn't have put it in there if it wasn't true. Right. right. And so I think about that and that makes me laugh because I wish I had known that scripture before now. Um, but nagging, as a wife, you can also be a nagging mother. You can be a nagging right. mother, You can be a nagging sister. You can be a nagging cousin. If you nag, you need to stop. It's just nagging is not going to get you anywhere. You're right. right. Okay. So <laughs> I, I, Andrew always laughed at me because I'm, I'm always thinking about <laughs> ones that I can relate to. And <laughs> truly relate. We can all relate to that one. <laughs> exactly. Yes, we can. Let's just be honest. Mm-hmm. So, Andrea, so here's one that... Um, it's really drastic. Love, hate. You know, you hear about that all the time, you know, and I heard this little saying, there's a fine line between love and hate. So tell us about a time to love and a time to hate. So yes, that fine line between love and hate is what man places. God does not have a fine line. He's pretty clear about what to love, what to hate. So um, we know that God is love um, and he is the epitome of love. But what does that really mean? Does that mean he loves every single thing and every single body, no matter what we do? That's not true, right? So if we look at 1 John 4, uh, uh, verse 8, it says, the one who does not love does not know God because God is love. Then the Bible further goes on to describe what love is. So in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 uh, through 8, it says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, love never fails. So this is God's description of love. And because God is love, this is what he's like. These are characteristics of, of, of God that he wants us as his children to cultivate, right? So the time to love and a time to hate, hate is a very interesting thing. People don't ever equate God necessarily with the word hate, right? But the Bible, again, gives us truth around that. So God hates sin and evil. That we know, okay? And Psalm 5, verses 4 and 5 says, For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. And then James 4, 4 says, you adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again, if you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. And he goes on and commands us as his people to not love the world. Okay, so we're to love him. So we're all made in God's image. So we are created with the ability to love as well as hate. But as I said in the beginning, what we love and what we hate hate in our natural selves has absolutely nothing to do with God. It's what we we believe, what we feel. It's emotional. It changes. It comes and goes. You know, it's arbitrary. It's not fair. It's not just. So our ability to discern what to love and what to hate is not correct. So that's why we have to look at the biblical view. 
So what we have to learn to do is to love the things that God loves. Mm -hmm. That's what this is saying, a time to love and a time to hate. When is it time to love? We love our neighbors as ourselves. We love through patience and humbleness and self-control. We don't show anger. We don't hold grudges. We love the truth and we endure all things, et cetera, et cetera. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19 says, the, it lists the seven things that God hates. He hates pride. He hates lying. He hates murder, evil plots, those who love evil, false witnesses, and troublemakers. Notice that it does not include just things that God hates. It includes the people he hates, the types of people he hates. Okay, so that would leave us in a very bad place if he just would look at us because we all do those things. We would all be hated by God. <laughs> yes. But he is a good God. He, get, he did something that was so amazing and so fabulous. He is love. And because he's love and he has such a great love for us, he provided a way for us to walk as he does in love. So John 3.16 tells us he loved the world so much that he sent Jesus to die for our sins. So when we, came, we come to repentance, we are no longer an enemy of God. We are now the object of his love. So there's an appropriate time to love and hate. All we need to know to do and let, we need to learn is to love what God loves and hate what God hates. And we will be doing well. Yes. Amen to that. Amen. I mean, I think you pretty much told us love. God is love. And you pretty much told us what um, we should hate. And we all have to know, like you said, we all walk in this fallen world. So when you find yourself sinning, repent. Mm -hmm. Remember to repent. God knows your heart. Um, so we're not saying you should be perfect. We're saying that we live in this world, but we're not to become of this world or love this world. But um, think about your children. When your children did something wrong or someone did something wrong to you, when they came to you and apologized, what did that mean to you? So only think how much it means to your heavenly father. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come and repent. That's true. All right. So ladies, we're down to the last one. And it is a time for war and a time for peace. And as I thought about the war and the peace, you know, we've always had wars, the Civil War, World War I, World War II. So there's a time to defend the country, you know, so how many wars aren't really bad, you know, um, but it's a time for peace, right? And it's a time for us to make sure that we live in peace. So I, I just want you ladies, if you can, you share a little bit about it. But here's what I do know as a child of God, that we're going to fight many wars, mm -hmm. but the battle is already won. And if we can stay focused on that, we can get through these trying times in our lives, these trying th times in society. Do you ladies have any input? When I look at the war part, I mean, I, I see it as the physical man against man, soldier against soldier piece, but I also see it as the wars that we as individuals have in our lives against other people, against situations. Yes. There are times we have to stand up. Well, we do have to shake up the apple cart. There needs to be commotion. There needs to be accountability. So, so, so I look at war as being the confrontation of an issue or situation that needs to be addressed and changed. And change does not come unless it's confronted, acknowledged, and then we have to look, go for it. We can't just hide it and pretend it doesn't exist. So, so when I look at war, I look at some things that have to be faced, the reality of. Now, what are we going to do about it? And at the same time, there's a point where we just have to decide that we want to be in a peaceful place, a relationship with someone. Therefore, we, we, we let some of the stuff go that's just trivial, that doesn't matter. And, and we want to reconcile and restore that relationship. So I look at it in terms of not just a physical war with soldiers, but just a war um, that we're battling against a particular situation or circumstance or, or, or even our own issues that we're having. Because sometimes we're warring against ourselves. We're conflicted right. ourselves. We you know we want this, we want that, and, and we clearly hear God showing us, but we're, we're fighting Him because so 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 it is a reconciliation, and all of us have it. But um, if we what we have to do is just surrender it to God and say, Lord, show me how to deal with this situation, and um, let me be obedient to what You have shown me to do with that particular season that I'm in. Mm -hmm. 
but we have to confront it. We can't pretend like it doesn't exist. Right. So that's just kind of my perspective on war and peace. Okay. Yeah. And, and when I think about it too, like what Sid said is the internal wars that we have, you know, the personal things that we struggle with. I struggle with my weight all the time. There's a war going on with me and food. And you know, I'm turning that over, but I'm still fighting. So have I really turned it over? So I re- have I really gotten my peace? And no, my peace is not there because I haven't really turned it over. So, but we struggle. And that yes, war and peace are on separate sides, but um, at different ends of a, a, of, a, of a line. But I think it is definitely something that has that personal thing that still requires us to go before God Yes. And lay it out to him and give stuff to him. I'm talking to Alana and let him keep it, you know, instead of taking it back and and being defeated sometimes, you know, being defeated in my own head about about that and not really trusting that God does give me enough strength to fight that internal battle, you know, right. that I have right. uh, with with food. Um, but yeah, I, I I think globally and I think personally, you know, that there are seasons in our lives when we do have that struggle. And uh, the answer for both is, you know, you got to seek God, be humble, right. you know, trust that God will, will do what he says, and then be obedient. And, and so I look at it also um, from the perspective of the church age, if you will. So we know what is to come. Right. And so a time for war and a time for peace, true peace will not come until Jesus returns. That is when true peace will be established, where there would be no sin and there would be no more of pain and heartache and all the things that we experience on this earth. But in the meantime, it's a spiritual battle for people's souls. That's where we are. So when I think about that war and that peace, that war is it's it's picking up as we notice, right? I think 2020, if anything, was a really great indicator of what it could look like (laughs) and get even worse because we had pandemics, we had uh, uh, social unrest, we we have um, people and groups of people at odds with each other who hate each other. We have a whole environment that Satan is flourishing in right now Mm -hmm. because of all of the stuff that's going on. This is a spiritual battle. And I think as Christians, we have to remember what's actually going on and when things will change and when things will be accomplished. And it's only with Jesus that any peace, long lasting peace is ever going to happen. So where does our peace, what are we then to do? Our peace, as we look at the, the, the situation is to be found in Jesus. It's not going to be found anywhere else. And we have our pieces to help us get through what we have to go through. Whatever it is he's ordained, whatever he's planned for our lives as Christians, however he sees that unfolding individually, collectively as his church, but we have to be at peace. And that means we cannot let the world come in and take our peace. I think we saw that in 2020 when we all were listening to the news and the sad, horrible stories and day after day. I mean, I have to shut it down because there is no peace. You're feeding on the wrong thing. That's not to say you don't need to be informed. Be informed, then pick up your Bible and pray (laughs) and stay there. Because when you get up and you look at what's happening, you start to look at it in a different way. You start to look at it in terms of what the Bible says is happening, why it's happening, what you should expect, and then what is my response in this situation. That's exactly. what I should be exactly. doing. So that's when when we talk about war and peace, that's where we are, I think, as, as Christians across the world. It, things are heating up <laughs> for us, and they will continue to heat up because the Bible has predicted that these things right. have to happen if Jesus is going to come back. He's not going to come back till these things are fulfilled. So mm-hmm. we just need to know that and live according to that. And I just want to just add to what Ann said, there will never be total peace and utopia on this earth. That Correct. will never right. happen. That's we right. will always be in these battles. So something we just, because we're looking for it. My prayer always is, Lord, I pray that things will get better. Mm-hmm. I know they'll never be perfect, 
that just cannot happen because we are imperfect people. I mean, let's just be real from this standpoint. I think it's unrealistic to think everybody's going to love everybody and have, that's just not going not to happen. <laughs> it didn't happen in Jesus' time when he was here <laughs> among his own people. So why do we think it's going to, so, so, so I recognize that, but I still pray for it to get better, that we can be better. And, and that is what God is looking, how we're reacting to it right. um, and, and how we are making a positive as Christians, a positive impact right. on some really horrible situations that we're dealing with. So um, so that, that's my prayer, Lord. Allow me, empower me to help things become better, to bring your glory and to please you. Um, okay. That's just kind of the way how I reconciled it, you know? Yeah. And I think that's a great way to reconcile. I And I, I just want to remind people that you're right, every last one of you, the things that are going on in the world. But what we can have, that peace beyond all understanding. Yes, we can. That's yes, where can. my peace is. When everything is not going the way it should go, when things don't go the what? because we're all um, fall to injustice at some point in our lives. But it's that peace beyond all understanding where I know God's in control. Right. So I don't try to be God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't ask for that because you're right. It's not going to happen. As Christians, we know the battle is won, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can live in peace and we can have that peace beyond our understanding because we know that God is in control. But just like you ladies said, the Bible is being fulfilled. So we need to make sure we know that that is happening. So, I, you know, this has been awesome. I have truly enjoyed our multiple conversations <laughs> on Ecclesiastic 3. And, you know, what season are you in? And as we talked about just now closing, um, what season is the country in? But it all goes back to God is sovereign. Uh, we look to God for everything. And as long as we seek his guidance, he's going to show us and every way, the good and the bad in life, because that's pretty what, what Ecclesiastes is telling me, is telling me that you're going to have some good, but there's always some bad. It goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. We deal with that and how we respond to it. It's based on the word of God. So we really hope you enjoyed it. And I'm just going to say that if you hadn't seen the other three before this one, you don't know what you're missing. So you need to go back and watch all of our conversations on Ecclesiastic 3. So thank you for joining us. Once again, those of you who are subscribing, we love you. Those of you who haven't subscribed, we love you too, but we need for you to subscribe, okay? We don't need for you to miss it. You know, ring that bell, send us a comment. We look forward to hearing from you because from hearing from you, God is allowing us to know next steps and what you need. And so this is what these conversations are about. We're allowing God to use us to minister to his people. So we love you and we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.